Good morning, good morning, good morning, Russia. Today we're going to go in a little bit history of Russia, the amended history of Russia. Yeah, let's know about Russia a little bit and let's try to understand what are we into. I'm doing a lot of videos from Russia. This is supposed to be the video I would have done first to know the country before I jump into it. Thank you so much for clicking. Let's just jump into this video, me and you, and we see how far Russia has come from. You all ready? Let's go. Russia is the largest country on earth, spanning an incredible 17 million square kilometers. But if you're anything like me, you're probably wondering how it got so big, and how it has become such a powerful political and social entity in our modern world. It not only takes the title of largest and most popular country and city in Europe, but also stretches far beyond Europe, across the Ural mountain range into Asia, it's taking up the largest Europe. portion of the continent. Principal history of Eastern Europe begins with a people the Greek writers called Slavs. The first Russian state was formed when a group of Eastern Slavs, later known as the Rus, elected a Viking chieftain to be their prince in 882, in the area between the Volga and Dnieper river basins. The state was soon expanded into the lands once held by the nomadic steppe peoples from Asia. The most important city they captured was Kiev, which is why historians refer to this part of Russia's history as the Kievan Rus. The Rus spoke a language called Proto-Eastern Slavic, which would slowly evolve into Russian and Ukrainian. The medieval Rus state adopted Christianity in 988, when Vladimir I introduced the religion from the Orthodox Christian Byzantine Empire. This is also why the Russians use the Cyrillic rather than the Latin alphabet, common in most Catholic nations. The Rus state slowly fragmented into competing princedoms, largely aided by the death of Yaroslav the Wise in the 11th century. The Rus were often at war with the nomadic tribes we will just call for simplicity's sake steppe peoples. These steppe peoples are integral to much of the history of Asia, and you'll see various factions of them popping up years. all over the place. Most steppe peoples originate from the Eurasian steppes, go figure, and were very good at horse riding and archery, such as the Volga Bulgars, Khazars, and Kipchaks. So with that I out like of the, the way, we can talk about the Mongols. Maybe they the came Rus from Mongolia, that's why good at riding horses. Under Genghis and Batu Khan, they invaded all the way into western Kievan Rus and established a state called the Golden Horde, with the Rus princedoms as their vassals. The Mongol Empire oh. quickly fractured into smaller khanates, allowing for the growth of more powerful states such as Poland, Lithuania, and the Grand Duchy of Moscow. By 1480, both states absorbed much of the Golden Horde, becoming more rivals with each other than with the Tatars. By 1547, Moscow had become a regional power, with Ivan the Terrible being crowned the first Tsar, the Russian word for Caesar. After all, they did see themselves as the spiritual successors of the Romans and the last remnant of Orthodox Christianity. Debatable. Ivan also renamed the state Russia Debatable. after the Rus who inhabited it. In 1580, Russia conquered the Khanate of Sibir, marking the first time Russia had expanded east of the Ural Mountains into Asia. The Russians renamed the mysterious new land Siberia after the Khanate had conquered. And do you think they stopped there? Well, spoiler alert, no. In 1601, the Russians faced a succession crisis as the beginning of the time of troubles. The country was in anarchy and in danger of being absorbed by Poland. Up to one in three of the population died, either due to war, famine or plague. By 1613, the Russians elected Mikhail Romanov as the new Tsar, establishing the Romanov dynasty for the rest of the country's history. Michael Speaking ended the, the wars and began the slow process of rebuilding the fragmented country. From this point until the 19th century, Russia's economy was propped up by serfdom, effectively protecting Russia's rich and powerful by turning all their peasants into hereditary slaves. Yeah, history sucks sometimes. By 1667, Russia had become powerful enough to win the Russo-Polish War with the help of the subjugated steppe peoples called Cossacks. They expanded their territory into southeastern part of Poland. The Poles and the Russians had informally nicknamed the area Ukraina, derived from an old Poland. Slavic word for borderland. Get it? Because it was the border between Russia, Poland and the Cossacks? Very creative. Anyway. One of Russia's most famous Tsars was Peter the Great. Peter was a reformer. He modernized the army, built the empire's first navy, traveled west and brought back ideas and technology of the Enlightenment, and also fashionable French clothing. He also expanded Russia's influence in the Black and Baltic Seas. The guy was basically in love with the West. After capturing a Baltic seaport from the Swedish Empire in the Great Northern War, Peter built a new city and founded it as the country's new capital, St. Petersburg. Russia also fought in the Seven Years' War, vying for power with the Saint European Petersburg. neighbors. He Another after formidable his Russian name. ruler was Catherine the Great, who was, well, not really Russian at all. She was born in Germany, and she killed her husband and seized the throne for herself. Her reign was one of reform and domination over the Crimean Khanate, as well as openly embracing the Enlightenment. In the mid-18th century, the Polish government collapsed due to a parliamentary limbo, and the surrounding Austria, Prussia, and Russia split the country in three during the Polish partitions, effectively wiping the country off the map for the next century. Just in time for the Napoleonic Wars. 
Russia, just like the other European monarchies of the time, feared the repercussions of the French Revolution and joined the second, third, and fourth coalitions against Napoleon, but they usually lost pretty badly. The French army he captured was fighting the abandoned Napoleon Moscow too. in 1812, however the Russians would not surrender, preferring to burn the fields that the French hoped to live off. After waiting a few months, Napoleon retreated from Russia due to lack of supplies before conceding a Russian surrender. And when the snow set in and killed most of the French army, the tide was turned in Russia's favour. Uh. Russia's territorial gains had become so ambitious that it triggered a war with France and England, who helped the Ottomans in the Crimean War. In 1861, Russia abolished serfdom in an event now known as the Emancipation. Also, in the period between Napoleon and the Emancipation, it is worthwhile to note that Russia expanded her territory into Turkestan, China, the Southern Caucasus, Finland, and Russian America. And were it not for the Crimean War, they almost certainly would have won the entire Black Sea. So they huge, really loved bro. land. In 1894, Tsar Nicholas II and the mystic Rasputin they who quite every small they him, around him, became the last over. emperor of Russia. There were revolts against the political system for many decades, and the monarchy was slowly losing its power. As an ally of Serbia, Russia aimed to protect the Baltic Slavs from the Austro-Hungarian invasion during World War I. The chaos and famine of the war led to the two Russian revolutions. The first opposed the Tsar and set up the provincial government, highly influenced by the Soviets. The Soviets were basically workers' unions inspired by Marxism. Vladimir Lenin's Bolshevik party came to power in the Soviets and seized power in the October Revolution, creating the RSFSR and the Russian Civil War between the Reds and the Whites. The Civil War led to the breakaway of Poland, the Baltic States, and Finland. In 1922, the RSFSR was renamed the USSR, a much catchier name. USSR. After the death of Lenin, Russia's most famous communist-era dictator came to power, Joseph Stalin. Born in the old Russian Empire, now modern-day Georgia, Stalin was an aggressive expansionist, go figure. He had aims of spreading communism throughout the world. He also resented Russia's territorial losses during the Civil War. He killed and exiled millions of people he deemed anti-revolutionary. With failed diplomacy with the Western European nations, Stalin entered into the non-aggression pact with Nazi Germany, hoping to regain much of the land lost during the First World War in Poland and the Baltic Sea. On the Skip first and 17th and of September, another. Germany and Russia invaded and divided Poland in two, beginning the Second World War. Originally in an uneasy alliance with Hitler, the tide of war turned with Hitler's invasion of the Soviet Union. The invasion killed more troops than any other theater of battle, and the German armies came just 24 kilometers from Moscow. However, the winter blizzard set in, turning the battle in the Soviets' favor. After the defeat of Nazi Germany, Stalin held onto the Soviet-occupied territories, enveloping them into the USSR or creating communist puppet states. The Western Allies treated the Soviet bloc with suspicion, in which the Soviets developed nuclear weapons and became one of the most powerful nations in history. The USSR was the first nation to put a man in space during the American-Soviet space race. After decades of poverty and political unrest, as well as involvement in numerous proxy wars with the United States, the USSR finally collapsed under the weight of the one-party communist state. The Russian Federation was formed as a newly democratic republic. The two most important Eastern Bloc states, Poland and East Germany, broke away from Russian control. And the eastern parts of Russia also broke away to form two new countries, Belarus, or White Russia, and Ukraine. The rise of Vladimir Putin, a former KGB officer, into the prime ministry and presidency of Russia brought with it renewed foreign policy. Putin became involved in the Syrian civil war, the East Russian separatism movements in Ukraine, and the politics of many Eastern European countries. Modern day Russia's future is uncertain, as is the motives of its leader. However, the nation is in a state of peace, will be hosting the Football World Cup in 2018, and is emerging once again as a world superpower. Wow. Thanks for watching everyone, please like and subscribe. If you're interested in my animation of country history, you can click here to watch more episodes, and if you're interested in helping a startup animator like me, you can also pledge me. Thank you so much, actually, for watching. I enjoy this history. What was wrong with people conquering neighbors and taking over the land and become so big? Man, that was the story then. People would fight each other. That's why they created First and Second, Third World War, Cold War, everything they created. Because of wars, because they wanted land. Just imagine a country from Europe coming to conquer in Africa because you guys learned, learned so much. Thank you so much. See you in the next video. Hopefully, Russia will request again. Bye. Subscribe.